Hi, everybody. Wow. Hold on. I have got to get this thing off of my screen. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. Um, Hi. I don't remember what I was going to say. So <laughs> welcome back. And we're back together, which makes me very happy. I feel like we haven't recorded a remote podcast in a minute. Like when we came back, we were together and then I did a solo one. But like, I forgot I even wore AirPods and I did this. No, it's been so long. So for my birthday, um, Tony got me like a bunch of podcast stuff. He got me like a new, two new computer screens, a thing that like makes the computer screens float. He got me this thing that goes over my microphone to do something for the sound. I don't even know. So hopefully I sound better. I don't really know. (laughs) I guess we'll find out. People slide into our DMs, leave us your nasty grams, whatever you want to (laughs) do. Hopefully it just sounds better. He said it would. I trust him. So whatever. Yeah, he's a total like computer geek. So yeah, he should be on the geek squad squad at uh, Best Buy. He should be. Um. So <laughs> last week I recorded without you, and like you just mentioned, you just had a birthday. And how do you feel now that you're 33? You know, I don't feel much different to be honest. I feel kind of the same. Just like. I'm so tired all the time (laughs) and I have heartburn all the time. I feel like the second I turned 30, I was just tired and heartburn 24 seven. Like yesterday I ate three Tums and I still had heartburn going to bed. And I was like, what the hell else do I need to do? Like, come on, get your shit together. I have noticed as I'm getting older, like the certain foods that I'm eating are definitely causing a little bit of like acid reflux vibes. Mm -hmm. Um, and also when I do like heavy binge drinking, like we did in mesquite. So like when I got back from mesquite, I feel like for two days straight, anything I ate, it was like acid reflux for sure. Mm -hmm. So that's like for sure an old age thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, since you brought up mesquite, we have just got to talk about it because it was the best time ever. (laughs) <laughs> it really was the best time I got this sweater in mesquite from our friend Chelsea so cute I know I got the same one mine's actually washing right now I just barely unpacked all my stuff yesterday so oh I'm really behind in the journey of life but mesquite yeah. was so fun so freaking fun mesquite was mesquite is just another level and like if you have friends that enjoy like drinks fried rice uh, slobbing it up at a casino at nighttime, but like just hanging out at the pool during the day, like mesquite is a place that you need to go in the summer with your friends. Like it is so fun. It's just bunch mm-hmm. of like older people and the most random people ever cross your path. And it's just freaking hilarious. It's so fun. It's just so chill. Like I like it so much more than Las Vegas. It just is such a chill situation over there. Um, but we were definitely slobby in the casino because the tequila sodas were only three dollars. Dude, we could not wrap our minds around the fact that they were three dollars. We first thought, thought we were like being scammed or something that they forgot to like ring something up. And once we found out they're actually three dollars, we were fucking hit in that bar nonstop. Like life we changing. Like, it's like on a cruise when you get a road cone, like your road ice cream. We were getting road tequila sodas because we're like, yep want a three dollar one why not like three dollars is nothing that's only 300 pennies like that's nothing <laughs> and they were so good and we did find out afterward because we were like what is this tequila like we'd go to like the little cafe there and order like a tequila soda and they'd be like what kind of tequila do you want and we're like don't ask us that we just want the one that you guys have been making for us and when we ask when they'd ask we'd get like Casamigos or 1800 or something drone. Yeah, and they tasted like dog shit. And we were like, mm-hmm. what is going on? And we found out afterward that they have a house tequila that they're using. And it's based, I think it comes in a plastic bottle. Montezuma and, tequila is what it was. $10 for a half gallon. So we never got hangovers really. Ever. I felt a bit sick Sunday morning, which is like so annoying because it's like, of course, the day I'm driving home. Um, but I think it's mostly that like, I didn't drink much water once we started drinking. Like the second Mm -hmm. we started drinking, it was like only tequila sodas. And we had a lot that last night and Mm -hmm. yeah, it was really fun, but I felt a bit shitty. 
Yeah, I still need to go buy this jug plastic tequila and make my own because I refuse to believe that's the tequila we were drinking all night because it was so good. We even got the ones with Patron, which Patron is like the high-end tequila, and it tasted so gross. It was not good. We were like, this is disgusting. I don't even want to drink it. And then they were more expensive. It just didn't Mm -hmm. make sense. Yeah, it was insane, but it was really fun. I won no money. Um, I actually cut myself off like the first night. (laughs) Well, the first day and a half. And I was like, I'm done gambling. I'm not winning. But our friend Chelsea did win a lot. So that was exciting. And like, good for her. But like, also, fuck you, Chelsea. That was really frustrating. (laughs) Like, I'll cheer you on, but low key, I'm upset. (laughs) I hate losing when I gamble. I gambled more than I ever gamble. I told Wally that I had spent like $300. And he's like, who have you become? I was like, we were there for three days. (laughs) Yeah, we were there for a long time. It just happened. But no, the vibes were good. We were definitely like, everywhere we go, maybe it's just because we are like, we do stuff to like cause attention unintentionally we just like to have fun but like people do not enjoy the fact that we show up with a theme or that we show up and like well it depends on the people some people are all about it and then there's other people that are like who the fuck are these girls like they're so annoying but there it is like a 50 50 yeah like when we would show when we went to the pool like people would just be looking at looking at us in the pool like and they're girls, first of all. They're not the men. Mm-hmm. They're the girls just, like, looking at us like, ugh, you're so annoying. And then there's some people that just, like, let us go on our way. Mm-hmm. And it's just really weird every time we go, like, on the <clears> cruise, <throat> everything. It's, like, people always are looking at us of, like, who are these people? Why are they having so much fun? Why do they have pink boas? Why do they have pink sunglasses? Like, I don't know why it bothers them. But, like, do that for yourself because it's a fun time to have a theme and like it's fun to show up like having an exciting time and the theme was like perfect yeah I I loved it I don't even know exactly what our theme was it was just like hot pink it was pink fun bitches yeah (laughs) pink party bitches like it was just so fun we have boas and birthday crowns and cute little glasses and then these mark sweaters and then Chelsea also made us like cute tank tops so it was just a real good time it really was and I think every summer we need to have a mesquite trip just like that I do too I do too it was so fun we did get really drunk and try to go out dancing and then we realized <laughs> we're probably too old to go dancing <laughs> so we decided not to but we almost did go dancing how do we have done that I don't know if I would have like survived I don't think I would have enjoyed it at the end of the day like it's just not my vibe like I enjoy I don't like going out anymore I like mm-hmm. to go to dinner like somewhere where I can go to dinner and have a good vibe but then outside of that I want to be like somewhere cozy and like in my element like at home or someone's house or mob in the casino like somewhere just not getting wild mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel like dancing would have been way too much and I'm glad that we decided not to because we almost yes. went <laughs> I totally agree um what else um after Miski, I went to Disneyland with my niece with both my nieces for their first time and it was so magical and so fun there is nothing like being with a six-year-old in Disneyland for their first time like she thought all the characters were real she was so excited to get their autographs like it was so just a whole different level of Disney that can't even be explained to like be there with a child yeah so it was when we went the first time with our kids like Henley was so pretty little she still remembers it but Jaden mm-hmm. even at like 10 11 even though he knew they weren't real he thought it was so cool and like mm-hmm. it was just, it's just crazy seeing Disney through kids eyes mm-hmm. honestly Mm -hmm. it was just like everything like every little thing like she got this balloon that like lit up and she was like my balloon's magical it lights up like everything was just like magical and that's what I just really appreciate like I don't know and then my sister um, booked the Disneyland hotel and that has always been a dream to stay there and let me tell you I'm gonna have a real hard time going to Disneyland and not staying there again (laughs) Yeah, I definitely, it's on my list. Like, when we run our half marathon in Disney World, I plan to stay, it, it, if I can, the whole time. But if not, at least, like, 
the day or two like before the race and after or something because like a I just ran a half marathon I deserve that Mm -hmm. but b like I just want to stay there so bad it truly and like just staying on the property like not having to drive anywhere that was really nice but it just the level of detail of every little thing was just it was so magical like all of their mirrors had like pixie dust on them like the little sticker pixie dust there was hidden mickeys everywhere like even on the carpet on the sheets like it just was so it was just very magical and I just am very happy that I got to experience all that Disney does details well and I will forever appreciate that I love details like that Mm -hmm. yeah but yeah you had a crazy like couple of (laughs) weeks I feel like I would say (laughs) yeah we were supposed to take our engagements on the day that I got home from Disneyland because I took like an early morning flight but it was seriously dumping rain so we had to reschedule those to next weekend which is a little annoying but it's it is what it is so it didn't end up being as crazy as I thought it would be yeah at least it makes it so like when you get there you have more time to like deal with it because coming home from a flight and like all of those things it's just not your vibes are not right yeah and the flight was so turbulent I thought for sure I was gonna puke and I just yeah. did not feel good after it so that's terrible yeah but anyways that's all that's all for me just back to the normal working day <laughs> um I have a few things to say <laughs> as always okay. um my first one that's been a note on here for a minute that I keep forgetting to talk about is crop circles and <laughs> not just, expecting that <laughs> it's, I think it's because I've been flying a lot and every time I only see real crop circles like coming in because obviously you get really high in the sky but I always see them coming into Salt Lake and when I'm flying into like Vienna or even Amsterdam, I'm not seeing crop circles. I see all these fields and all of this farmland. There's never crop circles. And every time I come into Utah, I'm seeing these freaking crop circles. And every time I see a crop circle, I'm immediately freaked out. I think that there's some evil shit going on with them. And I'm still trying to understand why are they making crop circles? What do you mean by crop circles? Like alien crop circles? Like, the designs that they make, they make, like, these circles with designs. Like, there's, like, alien ones or, like, the alien ship that they say comes down. But, like, they make, like, this whole design. And I feel like I've heard some people say that that's, like, a thing that, like, is supposed to call aliens. I don't think I believe that. But I'm trying to understand why are crop circles a thing? Why do I not see them everywhere? And, like, what's the fucking point? I do not know, actually. I do not know. know. I would like some information. I tried looking it up and it doesn't make sense to me. So I just feel like it's evil. To me, it's evil. You're evil. (laughs) (laughs) If Um, anybody's a farmer and knows, let us know, please. (laughs) My next order of business is what are your thoughts on Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny? Okay. I have a lot of thoughts about the Kardashians and the number one thing is I fucking hate all of them. I used, I went through like a minute that I was like, okay, I could, I could watch the Kardashians. I think they're funny, whatever. No, they are driving me nuts. I can't do it. Their body like message that they're sending about their bodies out into the world is not okay to me. And I hate them all. So Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny hate them. Don't ship them. Don't like them. The only one I can semi stand is Courtney. And I feel like she's trying to get like away from her family, but like, I can't do it. Okay. Well, I'm actually watching the new season right now. And Courtney's not trying to get away from her family. She's just as vain and terrible as all of them, but she's all natural. And so people accept it. Um, What I would say is Kylie (laughs) is actually on like this thing on this current season being like you guys this message we're sending out into the world is unacceptable like this body movement that we're like all presenting like we need to use our power for better so I apply I agree with that actually like I've always liked Kylie um but Kendall a has always bothered me I don't enjoy Kendall um she reminds me too much of Caitlyn Jenner and also she just she doesn't seem to have substance to her. No, she's boring as a damn board. 
she seems super boring she seems super plain and like the fact that she's with bad bunny and the fact that he's into her is really confusing to me it's because they're witches and they sink their their powers into people that they want maybe i'm just really confused because bad bunny (laughs) sings about a lot of hoes and it's just the they don't seem like they'd be together so that was my rant on kendall i don't hate them the way that you do um I still like the Kardashians. I just like them at a distance. I don't get wrapped up the way that people get wrapped up. Like Wally and my sister get really heated watching Grey's Anatomy or something because it's like too political and too this. And I'm like, can't you just watch it for like what it is? Grey's Anatomy? Yeah, I love Grey's Anatomy. But like they just get (laughs) so fixed. Like or, oh my God, like this situation's happening and like why are they having to make it all like picking a side or two this or two that and to me it's like it's just so lighthearted to me not like in a like actual lighthearted way but it's like I don't take it seriously it doesn't affect my life if it's entertainment and I like I just relax I don't think that it's like that serious and they get mm-hmm. like they get heated similar to how you feel they get on that page and like I've never understood that I could mm-hmm. feel that way maybe about the Sex and the City reboot because I forgot Ugh. to text you back about that I'm fucking bothered by that one. I could be, I just, I can't, I can't even watch it. I tried to watch it and I got through half of the first episode of the second season. And I was like, I can't do it. I don't care how much I want to see Carrie and Aiden together again. I can't do it. It's so bad. I was going to start trying to watch it again because not skinny, but not fat has been watching it and like posting about it. And I was like, damn, maybe I can watch it. Cause I watched the first season that came out Mm -hmm. I never actually finished it but like I just couldn't finish it and then I was like maybe I can do it because Aiden's back and I just can't but I can't I think I'd get angry over because that one was fucking annoying me yeah (laughs) it was so excessive and so weird it is weird um my next order of business is the Jonas Brothers tour do you (laughs) like the Jonas Brothers my sister actually just asked me the other day if I wanted to go with her. And I was like, uh, I don't know. Like, I the Jonas Brothers are all right. I've never been, like, a diehard Jill Bro fan. Okay, so I don't actually like all the brothers. So that kind of defeats the purpose. Mm-hmm. But their tour seems amazing. And I love Nick Jonas so much. I think he is, like, such a good guy. And I just really enjoy everything he does because he's fucking sexy also. Except for his tooth really bothers me. I um, don't like his wife, though. Why are they together? Priyanka, I like her. Yeah, she bugs. I don't know why. Um, Maybe it's because she's beautiful. That's why I like she her. She is pretty. She's very pretty, but yeah, I don't know. Well, I think their <laughs> tour looks amazing. It looks like they're fucking crushing it, and I want to go to their tour. And I don't know why I had that on my list, but I just really need to talk about the fact that Nick Jonas is on tour and he's sexy as hell. And I love seeing him post more stuff. <laughs> you know who is sexy? Um, Tony and I, like every fall season, we watch just like a bunch of scary movies like once a week. So last night we watched Joyride with Paul Walker. And damn, he was so hot. And I truly to my core miss him so much like he was so hot and he would have aged so wonderfully well he was aging wonderfully but also I did see you post that a I've never seen Jordan but b when you posted this about him being the only celebrity you miss like what about fucking Kobe Bryant bitch I know you miss him not as much as Paul Walker when Paul Walker died yeah but like I don't think about I think about Paul Walker at least once or twice a week and I don't even know why I just like I'm sitting there and I'm like oh I wish I could watch, like, Paul Walker in a new movie. Like, you know, that's really strange. I know. (laughs) It is weird. It is, like, because my brain is just, like, always going. And, yeah, I think about him a lot. And I don't know why, but he's the only celebrity that, like, I've actually cried that died. Wow. Well, now that you say how much you think about him, it makes sense that you don't have time to think about anyone else, like Kobe Bryant. But, like, I'm thinking, like, Maybe once a month I think about these people, not like. <laughs> ah, what um, happened to my video? That's really okay, crazy to me. I know um, it's okay. weird. Uh, one of my last topics that I have to address is stop buying people candles with crystals because <laughs> I've just received my first one and it's been such a pain in my freaking ass. Like, 
I get the concept. It seems really cool when I got it because I've always actually wanted one. Now that I owned one and I've been burning it because I wanted to get the crystals out, it freaking sucks. The wax is so soft. The crystals start getting burned by the fucking flame because if you're not paying attention, the crystals will start falling into the thing or they'll smother the other wick and then you have a half burned candle. And I was able to rescue two of them before we recorded. I still have one in there, but I think it's worth noting that you should not buy those for anyone that actually likes crystals because they'll want the crystals and then they get burned or they fuck with your candle and it's kind of a pain in the ass. Did I get you a crystal candle? No. Oh, I thought I did. I thought that I got you one, but good to know because I actually really like those. I've never had one though. Oh, I was just going to say, did you have a hard time like I'm having? Because I feel like a fucking surgeon trying to get these crystals out and trying to save my wicks. And then it's just like, it's like a plant. It's like a plant that you have to take care of that's like not doing well. That's how it feels. (laughs) It's so frustrating. They're so pretty though. They are until you burn them. I'm going to buy you one just so you can like go through this. Okay. All right. (laughs) Anyways. So my last order of business is I was doing a Peloton ride today and it ties in really well with our theme today. So I'm going to tell you something that Selena, not Selena, go, oh my gosh, back before I start, Selena Gomez has a show on Hulu right now called Only Murders in the Building. I've wanted to watch that. Wally and I have been binge watching it. It is so good. Is it? I wanted to watch that. I will say the first episode, give it until the second episode. The first one, you're kind of like, this is weird. Who are these old guys? You're trying to get used to Selena again. And you're just kind of like, what is going on? By the second episode, we were hooked and we have been binge watching it ever since. It's really good. All right. I'm going to have to watch it. Um, Anyway, so the Peloton instructor is Selena Samuela. And she said in my run today, she was saying, be aware of the energy you allow into your life. Sometimes that includes your own bullshit. And I was like, damn, that's so true. And it made me think about our topic today, which is glimmers. And I think sometimes people forget, first of all, Taylor's going to tell you what glimmers are because that's necessary. But I think sometimes people forget that their own energy and their own thoughts and their own negativity are exactly why they have bad energy in their life like your own bullshit is directly affecting your energy so you need to be aware of it and now Taylor will talk about glimmers so glimmers are experiences interactions or resources that can help us feel safe connected present and settled glimmers help calm the nervous system and return us to a regulated state they're essentially essentially micro moments of joy And these moments can so easily pass you by if you don't notice them or look for them. Um, The thing that always stands out to me when I see people post about glimmers is the micro moments. And like, as I was prepping my notes, it really hit me how micro mine are. Like they're like, Mm -hmm. they're a little like, I think I have a note about it. Like they're literally, oh yeah. They literally like flash through your body and your brain, like the blink of an eye. Like if you're not actually in tune with your body and your mind you will have no idea that you're having these glimmers it'll be like you like just like that like Mm -hmm. they will leave so freaking fast these micro moments really are so micro Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that one of my biggest glimmers um is just feeling the sun on your skin like when you first wake up in the morning and you walk outside and there's like that beautiful fresh sun that just rose and you can feel the heat on your skin and that's instantly gone unless you pay attention to it and be like oh man that's a beautiful day like the sun is on my skin that's like one of my favorite glimmers it's just feeling like the warmth of the sun that's so funny because one of mine that I like just realized now that you're saying that mine's not being outside in the morning sun like that but mine is when I'm like in my bathroom, I have like this window that looks out into my backyard and I can see the morning sun like hitting my grass and like some of my flowers. And it's such a different color of sun. It's not like the bright sun. It's like subtly just coming up. And every mm-hmm. time I see it, I'm always like, it. I just feel so much like happiness. Mm-hmm. And like, that's one of the things that I wrote down about glimmers is like some of the things that will like your body can feel and that's joy ease contentment inner peace and hope and like I feel a sense of inner peace but it's so fast if I like don't stop and just stare at it for a second 
I would have moved on and I wouldn't deal with it. But now that I've noticed it, I'm always mm -hmm. like, oh, I feel so happy seeing that. Mm -hmm. It's so wild. Yeah. And my, another one of mine is like the first drink of water in the morning, like the first sip of water is so like a lot of my glimmers bring me a lot of peace. And that for some reason is so peaceful, just like having the cold water in your mouth and just like swallowing it. Like that's so glimmerish to me. That's so interesting. When I have water in the morning, cause I always have water next to me. It's like desperation. I'm like, Oh my God, I need a sip of water or I'm going to like turn into a prune. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, a couple of things I wrote down about glimmers now that you gave the definition is um, I kind of wanted to like break it down a little bit easier for people to understand. And one thing that I think you can notice about glimmers or start thinking about with glimmers and why they're different than a trigger because they are opposite of triggers. So a trigger would give you anxiety or like start stressing you out. Glimmers actually reduce your stress. They're opposite of triggers um they're tiny moments of awe like they're like a tiny moment of gratitude where you're just it's like this little tiny thing um they also send cues of safety to your nervous system and so it's just like that's what brings you the joy and the inner peace and like the hope for life because your nervous system like felt this like shock almost like it's like a quick shock like if you put your finger on those battery things or whatever that people always tell you to do which I fucking don't do that why is that a thing <laughs> I freaking hate when people are like, just touch it. It doesn't hurt that bad. It's like, why is anyone trying to experience that? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> but if you've done that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's like that jolt. That's literally how tiny and micro a glimmer is. But that jolt <clears throat> sends that to your nervous system of just like, ah, and it's then it's gone. <laughs> and I think it's really too important to know that it is just like a tiny thing. And so are triggers. Like you can get triggered by the smallest thing. And this is the exact same. You can find a glimmer or that peace or that happiness in the smallest, tiniest little thing. For sure. One thing I've noticed too, is like, I have a really hard time, um, paying attention to my glimmers if I'm really stressed out. So if I'm really stressed or I'm like really in my head, I'm really like fucking irritated by something or angry or whatever. It, I don't have these moments of like, I, to me kind of like think of them as gratitude a little bit too. Like these moments, mm -hmm. of like that moment of awe, just like, oh my gosh, like that's so amazing that this happened or, oh my gosh, it's so crazy that I have this house. Like those to me are little glimmers. Um, they could be considered gratitude. I feel like there's like this really thin line, but I think they kind of go hand in hand, honestly. For sure. Um, yeah. But when I'm not in like a good mental headspace, glimmers, I'm not paying attention to them. I'm not seeing them. And I think that kind of goes back to that quote that I said of like, your own bullshit is part of the energy in your life. And so if you're not aware of like what thoughts are crossing your mind, then you're you're not able to even see these glimmers at all. You're just in triggers and anxiety and stress and all the terrible things that we all hate. Yes. And <clears throat> so if you guys follow the holistic psychologist on Instagram, she is amazing. She also has a book called Do the Work. And it is honestly one of the best self-help books I've ever read. But she talks about glimmers a lot. And one of them is, is how to have more glimmers. One of the things that she mentions is to soak them in and gratitude is the key to having more glimmers. If you're witnessing a beautiful sunset, take some deep breath. Thanks. Ugh, take some deep breaths and thank the universe for the experience. So I do think that glimmers and gratitude go hand in hand because you do tend to feel like an overwhelming amount of gratitude when you do notice the glimmers. No, I think it's true too. And like, we talk about how, like, if you want to shift your mentality and you want to like have this life that you want, like you have to be doing gratitude. And I think that that's so important to like point out that like gratitude directly will impact you noticing these glimmers. Um, one of the notes I wrote down too, is that glimmers can turn into a glow, which I hadn't really heard of that concept. Oh my God. Did you see that? <laughs> no. <laughs> was terrifying I think it was just a fly but it felt like a big black dot and that was <laughs> sorry everybody um anyways I hadn't really thought about the fact that glimmers can turn into a glow and when I looked into it a little bit more when I was making my notes 
it was saying that if you want a glimmer to turn into a glow and be something that you can feel a little bit longer or start to notice things more, then you have to sit in those moments longer. And that kind of stuck out to me because I don't, I've noticed the glimmers, but I haven't been sitting in them very long, really. I'm just kind of like, oh, really enjoy this or oh, Mm -hmm. this. And then I'm kind of like, okay, now I'm going to get dressed or oh, now I'm going to shower. And that to me, like made me think like, okay, when I, my next challenge to myself that I want is that I can like actually start to like think about them a little bit longer, even if it's just like 30 seconds total, which is, seems like a long time to just sit there and think about it. But I want to try and do that to see, I don't, I can't fully understand this whole glow thing, but what it was saying is basically like the glow turns into more of like a long-term effect that your body and your mind are feeling where you're like, when people say you're glowing, like that's almost your energetic state if you keep focusing on these because they're happening and it's staying in your body and your mind longer. And so I was like, okay, I like this and I want to explore it. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing that I, when I was researching glimmers is being present and that helps you like notice and soak in the moment more is by completely being present. And I teach this in yoga all the time, but I'm learning that I'm actually having like a really hard time being present in my life because I'm having like a lot of medical things going on and I am heavily disassociated from my body. So I am really working on trying to be present in every moment. And the biggest way that I teach people to be present is pay attention to your five senses. So your touch, what you can touch, what you can see, what you can feel, what you can taste, what you can smell. And if you're just like sitting in the chair and you just look like for those five senses, even if it's just like the saliva in your mouth, like you don't have to be eating anything to taste anything, but that's the quickest way to like bring you into the present moment. So that's really something that I am trying to work on because you won't see the glimmers or be able to soak them in if you're not present. One thing that's so funny that you mentioned this is like one thing that I noticed and it was kind of tied into my whole burnout cycle and my stress, uh, completing my stress cycle thing. One thing I noticed is I get into those stages when I'm not being present because I'm just like one thing after another, after another, after another. And it's like, when you're in that headspace, you're not actually present. I'm like a checklist where it's like, okay, we got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do this. Now I'm going to do this. And you're always in this cycle of like doing something rather than actually being in the moment. And so when I was in that therapy session, I was like, I have got to be better at being present. And like today I like told myself, you're not getting on Instagram afternoon. And I'm going to start trying to do that like every Sunday until it becomes more of a habit because I've noticed that like I can so quickly not be present. Henley can be talking to me lately and I'm just trying Mm -hmm. to distract my mind and I'm not even hearing what she's saying. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's so sad. Like I need to stop, like the internet will always be there. I don't need to sit and mindlessly scroll. Mindlessly scrolling is like literally the dumbest shit that we have in our lives. Like I get it. I love it. I post a lot. Please keep looking at my stories, all you haters. But like, (laughs) I truly like, it doesn't serve a huge purpose, honestly. And like, I need to, like, I was like, on Sundays, I want to start my day on Monday, like, knowing that I distracted myself, like, I've turned on my like, um, I don't know, it's like your focus modes. Mm -hmm. So that like, I don't get text notifications, because it's so easy. Like, I get so many text messages all the time. It's so easy for me to just always be dealing with something. That's another checklist. You know, it's another thing mm-hmm. that's taking me away from my present self. And so I, I was like, I'm going to turn this on. I'll check my phone still to make sure like I can still like, because otherwise I just wouldn't respond for sure. I would be like, fuck it, I'm done. Mm-hmm. But then I can still be like doing it, but I'm keeping my phone like also to the side. I've been doing it with my workouts too. Like I've noticed if my phone's nearby in a workout because I'm tired and I don't really want to be working out, I'll just like sometimes get on my phone, start checking emails, responding to messages, or it'll be like, oh, I really wanted to look into this and buy this. And then I'll start shopping. It's like, bitch, you're Mm -hmm. on a fucking Peloton ride. Like, get it together. So now I like get on the bike, I check something really quick, or I'll post something that I was like working out, whatever. And I literally like throw it away from me. Cause I'm like, if you have it in your cup holder, you will look at it. Yeah. So yeah. I think your phones can be a huge way to like disconnect from the world you're in. And the more you put them away from you, I think the more present people can actually be. And that's a huge way to start being present, I think. 
Yeah, it's funny that you bring that up because that is also something that I'm working on is not spending so much time on social media and on my phone. When I'm with people, I'm very present. I'm trying to be very present, not be on my phone a whole ton. But when I'm alone, I am not present with myself. And I really just want to work on being more present with myself. And I get very, very distracted on social media. Yeah, I would say that sometimes we're almost too present like away from our phones when we're all together though we did good in mesquite but we stopped taking pictures for like I feel like two years because we were just being present all the time which is great I loved it but also I love having memories to look back at and like we Mm -hmm. don't have them (laughs) yep it's so true it's so true it's definitely a balance that you have to find um one thing I wanted to also bring up with glimmers um and it kind of ties into being present is like noticing your surrounders when you surroundings when you experience glimmers and the same goes for trauma and triggers honestly because like at the end of the day these are all glimmers and triggers all of these things that you're experiencing are activating something in your body and like noticing the things around you kind of like you said like the smells and those things notice how you're feeling are you feeling positive or negative so like is a person that walked in the room suddenly making you happy or stressed? Like those are huge, huge things that you can do to start helping yourself, like not be in spaces so that you can feel the trigger. So like if you notice your surroundings to experience glimmers, notice the people when you're having one, be like, who's in my space that just made me feel this like happiness or what's the smell that I just smelled or what are the sounds I just heard? Like for me hearing like summer sounds like a lawn mow, like, maybe not at the wrong hour, but like sometimes Mm -hmm. when I'm outside and you just hear it and it's like the perfect lighting, it's like almost the end of the night and you hear it and you smell it. You're kind of like, ah, Mm -hmm. you have this like glimmer moment or places can be a huge thing. Like going to a beach, immediate glimmer for me. Like Mm -hmm. the second I like start walking and I see the water in the sand, like boom, glimmer, Mm -hmm. like pay attention to the positives and negatives of your surroundings so that you can start experiencing them more. And like, if you're feeling the negative ones, like stop being in that space. Mm -hmm. Um, I love that everything's just flowing so well together, but um, (laughs) define your emotions. So what your emotions mean to you, what does happiness feel like for you? What does sadness feel like for you? What does peace feel like for you? It's very easy for us just living in the world to not know what our emotions actually mean or not know actually what makes you happy, not actually know what loving yourself feels like, things like that. So focusing on your emotions and what they actually mean to you, like, you know, that a beach is an immediate glimmer for you. I know Disneyland is an immediate glimmer for me because I feel that happiness. It starts to grow in my chest. I start to get tingly in my fingers. I start to like get excited in my belly, like things like that. Just getting comfortable with the emotions as they come up and knowing what that feels like for you so that you can search for that. Um, again, dying at our flow all the time. (laughs) Um, the other note I have about glimmers is that glimmers can help you figure out who you are outside of your trauma, outside of pain, outside of like the hardships that you feel and outside of like sadness. And so like, if you aren't sure who you are, because you feel like you're just stuck in this, like body, this meat suit, (laughs) I think I said that in mesquite and it was so gross, but so So gross. Um, <laughs> but like, if you feel like you're just like, in this space and you don't have these feelings, like that's you and your body being in a traumatic, like state, and you're not actually able to figure out who you are. And so glimmers really help you figure that out. The more you start paying attention to these things, the more you're going to start to notice what makes you happy. And the more you're going to notice like everything that's more on the positive side, rather than like oh my God, life is so hard. I'm just here. And we're just constantly trying to go, go, go. And like, just make it through life. And like, that's a terrible place to live because you don't actually know what's bringing you to the other side. And there's like so much good on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, also spending time in nature is really great for glimmers. Like Houses are very great. I love my house. It's very calming, but like being outside and just being connected with nature and like the smells outside the trees the air like all of that is so 
it, it opens you up to receive more of the glimmers. And I don't think I ever really realized how much I wasn't going outside until I actually started going outside. And I was like, wow, this is actually so therapeutic. So spending time out in nature is wonderful for glimmers. Well, it's like when I talked about when I first went to Vienna and I was learning so much about like the world outside of the United States and like when they go to the doctor before they ever even prescribe them with something, they're telling them to get outside into nature. They're telling them to like go experience nature. And all the time, like I have this feeling of like, I'm like too trapped inside. Like I need to go outside. And like the second you're outside, like you just experience things like be outside without being on your phone too. Mm -hmm. like be outside and just like not be distracted, go outside and just see what it's like. And like hearing the sounds of nature is huge. Hearing birds, hearing water, hearing so many things, the wind blowing in trees, like it will naturally and immediately calm your nervous system. It's insane. Mm -hmm. So I've been microdosing shrooms. It's been truly life-changing. I don't know why my camera keeps going all fuzzy, but it's been truly life-changing. And the biggest thing with shrooms is like being out in nature. And yesterday, um, I was just feeling like, kind of like stress, like kind of like I had a lot of energy coursing through my body and I was just like feeling really stressed and almost like I had taken too much, even though I had taken the exact same amount. And so I went outside to like water my flowers and I left my phone inside and I was just out like watering the grass, watering the flowers and just like hearing things, looking at things. And it was so calming and so grounding and I'm telling you, if you don't do any grounding work outside, whether you're microdosing or not, grounding work is so amazing. Just taking your shoes off and stepping into the grass, like being in nature is so therapeutic and so cleansing. So that was like a, a little glimmer that I had yesterday. Um, I just have to take a second to tell you guys that recently I was like, Wally, we need to go ground ourselves in the grass and like, let's go check on our garden, which also checking my garden brings me so much like happiness. Um, and I got fucking stung by a bee in between my toes. So <laughs> I was just out here trying to fucking ground myself. And all it did was make me really sad and angry because that shit hurt. So be careful <laughs> where you're stepping your toes. <laughs> <laughs> be careful with your grounding work, but still do it. <laughs> Don't ground yourself in a pile of ants. <laughs> um, I actually have a list of things that are like, maybe helpful for you of glimmers in your everyday life that you can like you should probably think of your own but this sort of these are just like a list of things on the internet um listening to your favorite song is a way that you can find glimmers smiling at a stranger or them smiling at you smelling something you like for me I freaking love like when my house smells good like that's such a glimmer for me um hearing nature um hearing or laughing so like if you hear laughter sometimes like when I hear Henley laugh like I just get this sense of like oh my gosh his laughter is just so cute um or sometimes when I hear like my friends laughing like really deep I'm like I just love that for them and so I think when you're laughing or you hear laughter it can be super peaceful too um sun on your skin you mentioned that another one that really gets me is like um when you get into a car and it's like really really warm and you've been kind of cold, like, and you get in and your whole body just immediately feels like that warmth. That's a glimmer for me. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but it feels fucking amazing. It feels so good. <laughs> um, surprisingly hot drinks is a glimmer. And I, like, when I wrote that, I was like, it seems so weird, but if you think about it, like tea and hot chocolate and like coffees, they can be so comforting. Another one was like your first sip of your hot drink. And I was like, that makes sense. Like when I have like the first sip of like, a hot drink I do feel like a weird sense of calm which is weird now that I think about it because I actually don't like drinking hot drinks I just do it <laughs> I hate hot drinks honestly <laughs> um writing and doodling candles pets plants flowers and friends are the things that I have for your everyday life I like it those are all I would agree with all of those. I would also say moving your body is a big glimmer for me. Even if it's just like when I'm cleaning my house, I have music on and sometimes I just like stop and dance or sometimes I'm doing like a 
Peloton workout. And I know you don't like him, but Logan Aldridge is such a great strength instructor. And sometimes in between like sets, he'll be like, just dance it out a little. And at first I felt weird doing that. But once I actually started doing it, I was like, this actually feels so good to just like move your body. So I would definitely add body movement onto that. There's definitely times where like, I'll be doing something with my body, like either my hands working out, seeing something and I'll like have this flash of like, oh my God, I'm so glad that I have good eyesight and I can see these things or, oh my God, mm-hmm. like I'm so happy that I've been taking care of my body and I have the ability to move it like this, or I have the ability to run like things like that really put shit into perspective. And I think those are glimmers to me. That would be a glimmer of like this gratitude, this moment of like, oh my God, your body just did that. Or you, you can see that you can hear that. Like that it's just crazy your body doing things is such a weird concept (laughs) it really is so weird (laughs) um let's see okay so I wanted to share with you guys a couple of glimmers that are my glimmers so that maybe you can start like channeling your inner self and seeing like what glimmers are for you because everyone will have some that are similar but everyone has some that are different like Taylor's probably for sure is like breath work meditation and yoga (laughs) not that's definitely on mine (laughs) um one for me is getting a starbucks on the way to work on a friday like i don't know what it is about that friday feeling but like i fucking love getting a good starbucks on a friday because i know i'm barely working that day like i'm just there to be like what's going on check a couple emails do a little jig like i'm just cruising in my car with my starbucks and it is like such a moment um I'm slimming in that moment for sure <laughs> <laughs> um glitter surprisingly and I think this one's so that's funny. one of mine too no yeah way. I love glitter glitter makes me so happy that's why I always Same. have glitter on my nails because Same. yeah I love it <laughs> oh my god yeah if I like look at glitter I'm just immediately happy I'm anything with glitter anything that sparkles I'm just like yes I love it so much mm-hmm. um I already mentioned it, but a beach, the sun, organized spaces, oh my god, made me so fucking happy. Like, the immediate happiness I feel in an organized space. Um, Themes executed well, i.e. Disneyland, yes. Um, Or, like, when people have, like, a themed party or whatever, it just makes me so, like, I'm just like, ugh, such a good feeling. Um, Holiday decorations, for sure, are a glimmer for me um smells in season so like when it's spring and you start smelling spring air or fall like the Christmas sometimes I hate winter but sometimes the smell of winter I really enjoy it summer I don't enjoy summer smells unless it's like later I don't enjoy the smell of summer in the middle of the fucking day when it's hot Mm -hmm. as hell Mm -hmm. (laughs) um sitting peacefully outside like on a front porch or my back patio those will always be a glimmer for me. Fresh flowers in my house will immediately change my mood. Uh, anytime you see them, you're just immediately happy. And like, if you don't enjoy that, I think you're lying to yourself. Unless you like have really bad allergies, then I will accept it. Um, <laughs> ooh, this one's silly. I love replacing the scentsy scent in my senses and like figuring out which area of my house I want to smell like something so it's like the second a guest walks in do I want them to smell this smell or this smell and (laughs) then after I do that my favorite thing is to light certain senses and then light certain candles in other areas so that as people go throughout my house there's always some level of smell and then they blend so perfectly that shit fucking lights me up (laughs) And this is a true thing. You guys, she's not being like exaggerating. Every time I come over, even if it's a random day, there is always candles and scentsies going. <laughs> it's insane, but it just makes me happy. And maybe it makes someone else happy too. Um, <clears throat> wine or champagne in like a good vibe really, really make me happy. And adding to that wine or champagne in a good glass, like something about the aesthetics of it the vibes of it really get me traveling huge glimmer um the second I'm like leaving to the airport I'm like oh my god so cool um (laughs) a good Starbucks cup and a clean house those are my glimmers I like all of them but I feel like those give people a good idea yeah (laughs) 
Um, some of mine are, I love glitter too. Like it makes me so happy. I always put glitter on my nails, like either on one nail or like an ombre just, and every time I look at it, it just makes me happy. Um, a clean house for me as well. I'm huge on cleanliness, but there is just nothing like a clean house and walking on the floor barefoot, not stepping on crumbs. Like, oh, I just love that. Um, I also love like when my nieces and nephews get excited to see me. And that is just like, that brings me the absolute most joy. Like one time I walked into Shelby's house and Henley was so excited to show me her new backpack and her haircut. And I like can't even shut the door. And she's like, Taylor, like so excited. And when my sister picked me up from Mesquite, Mia like jumped out of the car and was like, Aunt Tay, like there's just that really, oh, I don't know. I, I don't, I can't picture a more perfect glimmer than that. Um, dogs licking you (laughs) like a dog kiss not like just like one on like the tip of your nose I love that I think it's so sweet um hugs from people is a big glimmer for me and the smell of like clean sheets so we wash our sheets every Sunday and every Sunday night when I get into bed it is just like Oh, the smell and just how clean sheets feel is so wonderful. I also love a good, fresh new pen that has like the perfect amount of ink coming out. I don't know why. I love that though. (laughs) That's so silly to me. Like those sharp, these Sharpie pens. Where is mine? The Sharpie Sharpie pens. Sharpie pens are so legit. They always have the perfect amount of ink. I know. And those (laughs) make me so happy. Every time I write with them, I'm like, Oh, this is just so satisfying and so great. Um, Yeah, I think that's all I can think of off the top of my head, but. Um, The dog one really fucks with me. I am not down for dogs licking me at all. And also actually just made me really sad because you have like this unique experience where you get to experience these children like so young and like not being their parent. Like I was just thinking is like, damn, my nieces and nephews don't do shit. (laughs) <laughs> when I come around, it's like they just want my snacks I don't get this glimmer I don't get any of these excitements but I mean when they were younger for sure but I just wasn't in the headspace probably like mm-hmm. to even notice these things so now I'm like sad that I never like have these memories <laughs> <laughs> I really sad. no <laughs> I really do not take for granted how lucky I am with the relationships I have with the children in my life. I really cherish every moment of those. Yeah, kids are pretty dope, even though they're also so fucking hard to deal with, for sure. Um, I think I would add to my glimmer, too, a good shower with, like, the space. Mm -hmm. Like, no one's interrupting you. You have time. You don't have to worry about going anywhere. It's like you have whatever amount of time you want, and you can just, like, be present in your shower because they everything shower. shower that's what those are called where you wash your hair shave your legs exfoliate and you have all the time and it's not rushed and everything shower I mean I always have something coming after my everything shower so I don't feel like I really ever have showers that don't mean like okay you have to do all these things but like come on <laughs> hurry up <laughs> sad for me but I'm also <laughs> someone that like I don't I don't ever want to be like a midday shower. It's like in the morning or like in the evening. I'm not like a midday shower girl. If I'm midday showering, it's like get in, get out. Like this is annoying. Why are you in the shower? Like I, mm-hmm. I, I was actually just thinking last night how fucking annoying it is that men have it so easy to get ready. I was like yep. not wanting to get ready yesterday. And we were going to go to dinner for Jaden's birthday and like kind of our anniversary vibe and while I was like we didn't take a picture so we have to take a picture so I was like that means I have to get ready so I had to like literally at three o'clock get in the shower wash my hair get freaking makeup on for like two hours <laughs> and then I got home and wiped it all off and I was just sitting there wiping it off like what a fucking waste and also men have it so easy I actually really enjoy getting ready, but men do have it easy. I don't like getting ready in like a rush, but I love to get ready. But honestly, Tony sometimes takes three showers a day. And I'm like, I could never, I could never do that. Oh my God. This just made me think of a wild concept that someone, my, I have a friend and her boyfriend, he takes 
probably like three showers a day too. Like he's he showers all the time. And he uses a new towel for every shower. No. I, I was like, I was like, I would be really freaking angry. I would not be okay. They always have to be clean. Mm -hmm. Like, can you imagine the amount of towels that these people are going through? No, that would be the opposite of a glimmer for me. That would be a trigger for sure. <laughs> That's a trigger and not a glimmer. That would be yeah. eight showers. <laughs> yes, for sure. For sure. <laughs> So wild. Um, so yeah, I think that's pretty much all I have about glimmers. Do you have any other notes? No, I don't think so. Ooh, a glimmer for me is getting tan, being tan. That is a glimmer for you for sure. Like it used to be in a tanning bed. Like, oh my gosh, going and being in a tanning bed would be such a glimmer. It could change your entire day. It's now, so true. Now just knowing that I'm tan. Mm -hmm. a tanning bed <laughs> as much as I hate to say this I'm so thankful that I grew up in a generation that tanning was like a thing because a tanning bed is the ultimate level of comfort um this is actually part of why I want one of those infrared saunas in my basement when we finish it which like I'm for sure gonna have because it still brings you that warmth mm -hmm. and that like light penetrating your skin mm -hmm. but you're also not getting cancer you're actually like doing the opposite and making your skin and your life better. So yeah, that being an invention is life-changing and I can't wait to have own one. Yes, I completely agree with that. It's funny that we're ending on tanning because our Dare Champs Drink Champs question has to do with tanning. <laughs> okay, so Dear Champ Shrink Champs slash hashtag asking for a friend. Is it weird to like the smell of spray tan or self-tanner? Yes, it is weird to like that. I was like, you're not answering, so I'm just going to answer. It smells like boiled hot dogs, and it's disgusting. First of all, I wanted you to go first because I'm the opposite, and I fucking love that smell. No, you it. don't. I love it so much. It is like, and I don't know, maybe it comes back to like tanning being a glimmer for me, but like self-tanner, I like that smell. Going to a tanning bed and like having that post tanning, like burnt skin smell. I love that smell. No, I, I cannot. And like spray tans, the smell of spray tan is so disgusting. And I hate that after spray tan, you have to like sleep before you can shower because barf, I don't want to go to bed smelling like that. It's really funny to me that you say boiled hot dog, because that's like a really gross I don't know. Those smell completely different to me, but I use, uh, like tanning drops that I put in my moisturizer. So my face is tan. And if you're not doing that, you should for sure do that. Everybody it's super great. Um, and you don't like turn into an Oompa Loompa, but one of my favorite things about doing that is that in the morning I can smell the tanning smell. And when I work out and I start sweating, I can smell the smell. It makes me so happy. Oh, I, uh... so I don't think it's weird. I think it makes you normal. And I think if you also don't like it, that's okay. I'll allow that. But I support you if you like it. You're honestly probably the first person that I've ever heard that says that they don't mind that smell. We should for sure do a poll on this one because I actually want to know people's thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll do them on our personal pages because no one responds on our podcast page thank you all very much our <laughs> listens are really high but our podcast page no one's voting so not sure what that's about <laughs> <laughs> I think I'll just... forever be like casually <laughs> fucking throwing shade people, yeah like, throwing you shade of like yo where are you guys at <laughs> Hashtag bully. I mean, I get it though. I don't always vote on like podcast pages that I follow on Instagram. Like I'm kind of just like, eh, whatever. I don't know I why. It, I think it depends on the question. If I have something I want to vote on, but I think I've been seeing a lot of people do like, I just want the results. So I think we should mm -hmm. start adding that because I for sure have been like, I don't actually have a say, but I want to know the results. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So that is true. I, push, I for sure push that one. <laughs> Okay, well, I think that's all we've got, right? Yeah. Hey, I think next week will be a solo episode for me because Shelby's going to be in Vienna again. Bitch, I'm still here on Thursday. 
Oh, never mind. It won't. The week <laughs> after will be a solo episode for me. And then it's going to be my wedding after that. So that's pretty crazy. Is it so actually? I think so. I think it's like pretty close. I think you're missing a week. I don't know. We'll, we'll <gasps> we report should, back. We should do. Oh, my gosh. I need to check the dates, but I think we should do a fun episode leading. So like it releases the week of your wedding. We're for sure doing this. We should do like a newlywed game and have Tony be on it. That'd be so fun. Yes. And I'll be the guest or I'll be the host. (laughs) Okay. I'm going to tell him that we're going to do that because that will be so fun. Um, I for sure we're making this happen. Wow. I cannot wait. (laughs) I love the newlywed game so freaking much so that would be so fun okay well anyways sorry got off on a tangent there but thanks for (laughs) listening now that we just talk shit make sure you're still following us on instagram but mostly just follow us on our personal instagrams um like like subscribe send to a friend youtube and anywhere that you find your podcasts we will talk to you guys next week bye bye